Billionaires are buying wild game farms in Africa, in a continent desperate for direct foreign investment, which already has vast land inequality. The billionaires' purchases are a vote of confidence in Africa's future and are also exposing government corruption in the process. The game farms have an assortment of wild antelope, big cats and other exotic species. The trend can be attributed to a few factors. Billionaires wanting to get in early on Africa's growth, seeing land as a diversified investment and wanting to escape to the wild bush far away from skyscrapers and posh yachts. The problem is, of course, massive government corruption and incompetence. The South African and Namibian Ministry of Land Reform are known for farms for friends and family schemes. There are many cases of government workers taking entire multi-million dollar farms and giving it to their own children or friends. For example, Moses Masilela, a black South African farmer, waited 22 years on a land claim, only to see the farm that was earmarked for his family be stolen by the very government official in charge of the allocation. Now, another problem is that Southern Africa is the most unequal region in the world. And one factor causing that is disparities in land ownership. Southern Africa is dry and arid, meaning farms tend to be thousands or tens of thousands of acres big in order to garner a profitable yield for farmers. This results in farms costing hundreds of thousands of dollars in a region where seemingly half the population lives on a few dollars a day. The first billionaire is Mexican investor Alberto Bayeres with around 8.5 billion dollars, who had been finalizing a sale agreement with the owners of Rindi Private Game Reserve in 2019 for 150 million dollars. Rindi is Namibia's biggest privately owned game reserve at a whopping 65,000 hectares. Bayeres was Mexico's second richest man with diversified wealth in mining, retail, insurance, and annuities businesses, but recently passed away at 90 years old. Which brings us to the second billionaire, flamboyant Russian Rashid Sardarov. Sardarov had looked at numerous countries for land and he had also chosen Namibia, given its scenery as well as political stability. He has three lodges totaling over 28,000 hectares of land offers trophy hunting at $3,000 a night, plus owns four neighboring ranches of 17,000 hectares. His upgrades to the property amounted to $100 million and took four years to complete, employing 450 workers at its peak. The lodge is five stars and has a butler, chef, sauna and spa. He has purchased giraffes, lion, crocodiles, hippos, 13 rhinos from Kruger National Park, elephants from Irindi Game Reserve, and a cheetah. And even has a private anti-poaching unit with a helicopter. He visits the farm a few times a year and goes hunting with family and friends. He says he really enjoys the privacy, given that Namibia is the second least densely populated country in the world, and travels here in his private jet, then takes a short drive to his farm. Controversy was stirred in 2019 when Namibia had a national land conference owing to issues on ancestral land claims, foreign absentee farmers as well as racially skewed land ownerships due to colonial conquest and apartheid. The land conference was deemed a sham as Mr. Sardarov hilariously purchased four of his neighbor's farms the week before the land conference, though he did offer to donate two million dollars to the Ministry of Land Reform, which rejected the offer on the condition that Sardarov donate the land to the state and who is now leasing the land back to him through a 99 year lease and is paying annual rent equal to the land tax. Sardarov plans to invest tens of millions of dollars in infrastructure such as hotels, a tannery employing local people and has even offered jobs to 15 children of Namibia's liberation struggle. The third billionaire is British defense and investment tycoon Harvey Bolter, who sells military communications technology all over the world. Bolter has invested about $10 million also in Namibia, purchasing a 22,000 hectare ranch along with Africa's big five of lion, leopard, 
buffalo, rhino and elephant and employs 40 people. But his African dream has since turned into a nightmare and he has surprisingly been charged with murder of his son's father-in-law. The incident happened on his farm during a bribe with drinks. His son had married the daughter of his game park manager, Gerard van Veik. Walter had made a sexually charged remark about van Veik's daughter and Mr. Gerard took offense. A scuffle ensued and Walter pulled out an unlicensed firearm which went off and a bullet went through Bolter's hand and into Van Beek's stomach. The farm being in a very rural area was 150 kilometers away from the nearest doctor and Van Veek tragically died only a few kilometers away from the hospital in Outshaw. Bail of $30,000 was granted on condition Bolter stays at a fixed address in the capital Windhoek. Reports to police once a week and may not leave Windhoek district without police permission. This has also ignited talks of preferential treatment. There's also British billionaire Sir Richard Branson, who owns over 400 companies worldwide. He owns Ulusaba Private Game Reserve outside Kruger National Park and even purchased the renowned wine estate Mount Rochelle in Fransuk, Western Cape. Fransuk was named by Time Magazine as one of the world's greatest places in 2022 and the area has numerous wine farms owned by ultra high net worth individuals as well as other billionaires such as Patrice Mutsepe and Johan Rupert who created the world famous cream liqueur Amarula. In the end, one thing's for sure, just as Rich Mullen said, the only man I envy is the man who has not yet been to Africa, for he has so much to look forward to.